Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Maddie with the Toaster Bros. And today we're going to find out, can the 12600K with Intel's new integrated graphics keep up with Ryzen's 5000 series APU graphics? Well, we have a gaming PC right here with that 12600K and obviously the graphics card is gone, but can those integrated graphics actually keep up? Well, we're about to find out, but first a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Green Man Gaming, your one-stop shop for great deals on PC games. They're currently running a big discount for Black Friday on over 4,000 PC games. A couple of notable games that we love here at Toasty Bros HQ are Back for Blood and Borderlands 3, all at insanely good prices right now. Green Man Gaming is a 100% official digital game retailer with a community of over 6 million gamers that have purchased from them in the last decade, so you should consider being one of those 6 million gamers by clicking the link down below and be sure to let me know what games you decide to pick up during this awesome sale. So real quick we're just going to go over the spec list on this PC and then we're going to actually just put it to the test with some benchmarks and hopefully find some old benchmarks that we did with the 5600G maybe the 5700G. So this PC is a well pretty high-end PC in terms of it just being an AP like you really wouldn't want to go this route because it's just stupid expensive because this, ladies and gentlemen, is a Z690 motherboard with DDR5 RAM, and it's 32 gigs at 5200 megahertz. You're probably looking at like four or $500 for just that RAM right now because it is so expensive. And also this very beautiful 280 millimeter liquid cooler from Gigabyte. This is a whole Gigabyte sponsored build, so it just looks really nice altogether. But obviously, in terms of price to performance, the I can promise you the 5600G build or 5700G build we've ever done will be way cheaper than this because usually we can keep it under $800. Um, with this guy right here, without that graphics card, I would guess this is well over $1,000. So that's definitely fun. Yeah, so we're just doing best case scenario for the integrated graphics on the 12600K because they are pretty easy to get compared to the i9s. And if you're just wanting a placeholder again in the market to eventually win one of those new egg shuffles or eventually get your hands on a new 3000 series or an AMD graphics card, well, can this thing hold you over? Well, what we're gonna do is go ahead and compare it to a 5600G and find out. So here we go, benchmarks. Woo! All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this, uh, well, 12600K all booted up and ready to go, let's test those UHD graphics. Now, first up in Splitgate, once again, we are comparing this with the 5600G and some benchmarks that we have of the 5600G in four titles. First up in Splitgate at 1080p on low settings, which is a good example of an eSports title, the 5600G averaged about 80 to 90 FPS and was really, really smooth. The 5600G, you all know, is great for eSports titles. Splitgate, Fortnite, all of the above, absolutely no problems getting over 60 FPS and maintaining that with very few dips. Yes, there are a few dips here and there, but nothing super crazy to, well, impact your gaming performance, and that is at 1080p. Now, with the UHD 770 graphics, we only averaged about 40-ish FPS, so definitely not nearly as good of a gaming experience, and this is where we start to see a trend here. The FPS numbers are far lower than I thought, and I do believe there is a reason for that, and we'll talk more about that as we go to Forza Horizon 4, which, yes, Forza Horizon 4 is the older version. There is Forza Horizon 5, but at the time of recording this video, we only had Forza Horizon 4, so we stuck with that. And for the 5600G, we ended up averaging 50 FPS using the built-in benchmark at 1080p on medium settings, and the UHD graphics only averaged 25 half the FPS. So that's not nearly close to what the 5600G is capable of, but I have a theory here and I wanna know what you all think in the comments down below. Unfortunately, at the time of filming this video, we're unable to test this theory, but I do believe the super high latency of the DDR5 memory is causing the UHD graphics to struggle. I really do believe if you have a DDR4 motherboard with UHD 770 graphics, you would see an improvement in FPS. Now, I don't think it will come close to the 5600G. It might get a little bit closer, but it's going to still be somewhat separated from the 5600G because it's just that much better than those UHD graphics. But I do think the super high latency that is in DDR5 has a big role. Yes, the speed is there, but the latency seems to be very important with those UHD graphics. Now in Apex Legends, the difference is a little bit closer and that has to do with raw CPU horsepower because on lower settings at 720p, this game is much more CPU dependent and both CPUs are very powerful. So the 5600G averaged about 70 to 80 FPS and the UHD graphics got about 60 to 70. The difference isn't that big because we are super CPU reliant and because of that, that integrated graphics isn't having to work as hard. So we're seeing the IPC improvements of the 12th gen Intel processor um, up against 
a 5600G. So, you know, it is a good thing to see that if you are playing a more CPU demanding game, you'll get better results on lower resolutions like 720p, but it does still show that it's going to have to be a CPU demanding game to come even close to the 5600G. And last but certainly not least is Borderlands 3, and first up with the 5600G at 720p medium settings, we only average 47 FPS. Again, this game is very demanding, very GPU dependent compared to Apex Legends, which is very CPU dependent. We really start to see that graphics processor in the 5600G get absolutely pushed to its limits. In theory, 30 plus FPS is playable, but it's not a great experience. But those UHD graphics, same settings, only got 18 FPS. In recap, I think the best option if you're somebody who wants to get a PC up and running to play games is still Ryzen APUs, the 5700G and 5600G. Yes, in the long run, the CPU performance of a 12600K is going to be much better with a graphics card than it is with a 5600G, but in... But in terms of just raw value for money, that's what we try to preach here. I would go 5600G and 5700G because you're going to get really good performance and it can still handle pretty much any GPU you throw at it and you are on the Ryzen platforms. But that doesn't mean I wouldn't recommend 12th gen if you're looking to get a GPU in let's say like less than a month because it can hold you over in basic games and it'll work as a normal computer. So let me know down below if you had this scenario, which one would you pick? I would love to know your thoughts. And uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up the benchmarking section of today's video. How about I bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right guys, so we just did some benchmarking and to our surprise, well, it seems like Intel is still not quite there with their integrated graphics. It just wasn't really up to par with something like the 5600G. Really, even the 3400G might actually slightly outperform this thing. So definitely get a graphics card if you're planning on going 12th gen. And of course, it kind of makes sense. Intel doesn't necessarily advertise this as the same extreme as the 5600G and 5700G, but it would be really cool to see Intel compete a little bit with AMD and their APUs, but it looks like that's not the case. I do think a big factor though is the latency of DDR5 because most integrated graphics in CPUs relies heavily on your system memory and having that super high speed is awesome, but the latency could impact the overall performance. So maybe some DDR4 testing would show better results, but I don't think it's going to be that much better and I still don't think it would be the 5600G or 5700G. But if you want to buy any stuff from today's video, link's description down below will be affiliate links and it will help us out. And it was cool to see how the UHD graphics have, well, not really improved that much. So as always, if you want to check out our other two YouTube channels right there and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros and do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye! Did you know that we made a TikTok a couple days ago and within 24 hours, it already has almost a million views? Yes, we have TikTok and a lot of other social media platforms, but we've been doing a lot of fun stuff over there. So go follow our TikTok. And if it's not a million views, definitely push it there. We want to get it there. Link's down below. See you guys later. Goodbye. Bye-bye.